It's so fascinating. I mean, former President Donald Trump winning the New Hampshire primary tonight. But if you take a look online, Nikki Haley seems to be the only thing on his mind. To talk about everything now, I've got Mike Leon, host of the Can We Please Talk podcast. Yes, we can. Right. Saleya Mosin, Bloomberg Senior Washington Correspondent. Also, Jane Coaston, a New York Times contributing opinion writer. And CNN's Mark Preston is here as well. Look, it's 1 o'clock in the morning. Do you know where the nomination is? It seems as though <laughs> it might be in Donald Trump's hand if you ask him that. Nikki Haley has a very different viewpoint. Mm. Once again, it wasn't the idea of, you know, two people in the race any longer in her mind or thinking she's won, but she feels pretty confident. Should she? Uh, look, if she does decide to get out, she shouldn't have done it tonight anyway. If she does decide to get out, she should go back to her home state, do it on her own terms. I do think over the next couple of days, though, look for people specifically in New York, perhaps in Miami, a little bit in California, the deep-pocketed Republicans who want Donald Trump to be challenged. And uh, we've already seen that there are several fundraisers that were scheduled after New Hampshire with the likes of Ken Lagone and, uh, and other very wealthy Republicans. For some reason, if, if we see one of these fundraisers go away, then absolutely you will see uh, her candidacy end. I don't think that she wanted to go out tonight, whether or not she's going to, because I don't think she uh, wanted Donald Trump to have that victory that he so much wanted tonight. Yeah. I mean, is it is it odd for people watching? Is it odd that here we are <clears throat> still in January, not even close to Super Tuesday, and two contests in, and we're talking about maybe one person already securing the nomination? Is that odd traditionally right now? I feel like in the world of Donald Trump and, and in 2024, after seeing everything that happened in 2016, nothing is odd anymore. We should be <laughs> That's a good point. That's great. great point. Grace and ready for everything. But to Mark's point, Wall Street has really been hoping for a Trump alternative. At Bloomberg, we reported earlier that there's all these uh, fundraisers, like you said, planned for between uh, New Hampshire and South Carolina, everyone was saying the quiet part out loud that, well, let's see if she lasts. That Wall Street money, that big donor money might be coming too late for her. Laura, I was on your show a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. and if you remember, I told you, talking. January 24th, <laughs> January 24th, we were going to know, math's not mathing right now for Nikki Haley. Now, there's a couple of things here, because the political analyst in me will say, I agree with everything that she said in that pseudo concession, not really concession, see in South Carolina speech. She mentioned that there are millions of other people coming up right before Super Tuesday over these next couple of primary states that deserve to be heard from a vote perspective. I totally agree with that. The issue is, to my buddy Harry's point, is that this is the state where 40 percent are independent and undeclared. This is the state that you put all your chips in the middle. DeSantis did it for Iowa. He dropped later that night, next day or that week. Uh, Nikki Haley did the same thing here, positioned everything for New Hampshire, all of the spends, all of the campaigning, all of the efforts, the moderate base that could appeal to her, to the platform. And she comes in second by about 12 percentage points. Where is the realistic chance to win over more states, more conservative-leaning states, more open primary states if you can't do it in New Hampshire? I, I don't know. I don't see that path. But right. I do wonder, I mean, are all independent? We talk about no voter being a monolith, no voting group being a monolith. And I know that, obviously, independents, moderates, conservatives, liberals, it all goes together in a big melting pot of how to predict everything. But when you look at it, I mean, is New Hampshire representative or Iowa of the greater independent base of people, if there is such a thing, to know that it's time for her to stop? Or is this a desire of Donald Trump? I think that that's just a desire of Donald Trump. You saw a lot of independents who did cross over in New Hampshire, but actually a lot of independents rode in for Joe Biden. That's why Joe Biden won the Democratic primary in New Hampshire, despite a lot of strange back and forth between the campaign and the state. But I think that you saw a lot of people in New Hampshire who said, like, I will write this in a little bit, vote in something else. And you saw a lot of Republicans voting for the person they believe already will be the Republican nominee. I think the problem that we're facing right now is that for a lot of voters, this is already over. This is a fait accompli. Like, they are saying, like, we should line up behind the future Republican nominee. And you're hearing that from the party nonstop. You heard... Marjorie Taylor Greene today basically saying it's time to start liquidating the kulaks, the people who stand against Donald Trump. And I think that there are a lot of Republicans who are like, this is the Republican candidate. This is who I will choose. And I think that there are a lot of people, I mean, just even the polling on the people who supported Haley versus the people who supported Trump, it's a very different constituency, even as to do you believe that, Don that Joe Biden won the 2020 election? He did. And Nikki Haley voters said so, and Trump voters said not. And so 
I think it's an interesting constituency, but it doesn't tell us very much about independent voters writ large. I mean, because this is a primary and most people don't vote in primaries because they have things to do. Oh, what, what do you mean? What, <laughs> what could one be doing besides being up with us at one o'clock in the morning talking about it? I don't it's know. It's the best time you your, could possibly have. I, I think, I okay, thank you. I think we're all clear. Yeah. That would be the last word for a second. Everyone stick around. We've got a lot more to cover tonight as well. And next, despite just endorsing Donald Trump, Ron DeSantis tonight is sounding the alarm on the former president. Hear why. Plus, pollster Frank Luntz joins us with his X factors on a potential Biden-Trump rematch. This is CNN's special live coverage.